Hello! Um, it's come to my attention that uh, I've got all of the software for North Star Advantages and nobody else does. Um, so I've endeavored to go about fixing that. I have a North Star here, I have a PC here, and uh, I've written some software that will let you hook up uh, the two together through a regular serial connection, RS-232 serial. Um, and you don't have to have any boot disks. Um, you just have to have a hard sectored floppy like this one. And uh, you can write disk images that you find on the internet. And if you have disk images, you can share them with the internet with my reader. So um, right now I've got this, this running. This is just on the, the normal boot screen, screen from when you turn it on. I have it hooked up with a, a USB serial to, uh, well, a serial to USB cable. And then over here, um, it's a Python program. I'm running Linux. You can run this on Mac OS. Uh, you can probably run it on Windows. I have yet to uh, experiment to give you a good idea of how to do that. But uh, this is the program. Um, it's called advload.py. Um, and all you have to do over here is you set the serial device to whatever the name of your serial device is. In this case, it's dev TTY USB 0. Um, on this machine, I also have to uh, change the uh, permissions on that device so that I have read and write permissions to that, to that with my regular users. So I've done that. And now I can run this program. It, it doesn't have a proper interface, so you just type uh, python dash i advload.py, and now it's running. Um, and then uh, you have to type a small bootloading component into the advantage. The advantage has what's called a mini monitor where you can just hit control C at the load system prompt, and uh, once you've once you've done that, you can examine and modify memory contents, and you can also start execution. So I've printed out, this is an older version, but I've printed out the short bootstrap code that you need. So I'm just going to type that in here, and it's just control C, and that star means you're in the mini monitor. I will display location FF00, um, and then I'll just type in these four lines. which is not fun, but it's not super hard either. Um, it's also worth mentioning there's no error checking in this. So if you type some random value, <laughs> basically you, you ask it a, a, a dumb question and you will get a dumb answer. And uh, once you've finished, you just press enter and it returns to the prompt. Then you type J for jump and we'll just jump to the start of this program, JFF00. Now it's running. Um, so back over here on, <coughs> on this machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this floppy, which has a copy of WordStar on it and uh, just put that in the first disk drive. doesn't matter if you have a hard disk system or not, the, whatever the top disk drive is. And now, um, to uh, start the disk reader program, all I'm going to do is type disk equals disk read ADV, which is just the serial connection. Um, 
And if you look over here, as soon as I press enter, this should start reading the disk. So this reads this reads the entire tr disk. It doesn't do any compression or anything. So it's it's uh, even though it's got the serial port running at full speed, 19200 bits per second, it does take a while, um, but not as long as it could. Um, and you can actually see over here, this is receiving the the track data, and you also have a a, a progress bar on the screen on the advantage to tell you how far it's gotten. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's going to take a minute. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Um, it's it's pretty hard to find software for this machine. It was such a low production. Thing, and it was also a business computer, and nobody has any love for business computers. Um, so I've been trying to track down more software for it. There's a little bit online as far as disk images. Uh, there was never any software to read or write disks uh, like this for this machine. It was all for the their other computer, the Horizon. Um, so, and the Horizon guys don't don't uh, care about these machines at all because they're completely incompatible, except for the disk format. So. I've actually got this software down here. I've got uh, I've got CPM. I've got uh, Graphics MS DOS for the 16-bit machines, um, WordStar, Microplan, um, and Bizigraph, which is which was the North Star business graphics package. Um, and I also have the uh, the Advantage Technical Manual, which some some wonderful soul scanned in and made available on the internet, so uh, that's been invaluable as far as figuring out how the disk routines work and everything to get this thing going. Um, I have scanned, I have a high-speed scanner, so I was able to scan all of the documentation I have. Uh, still looking for a decent place to put that up as, long as, as, as well as putting up this software. Um, I'm always interested in tracking down some other software so I, can, so I can do the same thing, scan it in and make it available. Nobody's making any money off these things anymore, so it'd it'd be nice to have these uh, as many of them running as possible. They're not too common. Um, as far as the software I've written, I've written uh, a basic bootloader, which lets you do a lot of the same things that you could do with the mini monitor. You can uh, receive uh, blocks of memory, so it's possible to rip the uh, the boot ROM out of this. Um, which is useful just for comparison purposes because I've seen a couple of different ROM revisions, um, <clears throat> and you can also you can also write your own software that will bootstrap off the PC, which which is extremely helpful because um, you don't have to mess around with with uh, disk drives that don't want to work and all of that. You can use fast text editors on your big machine and then and then work it out on this. Uh, so this is almost done. As soon as this is finished sending its buffer over, um, the screen will clear, and it will be back to the. Uh, 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 it'll just be back waiting for uh, another program to be sent over. So over here, this says that it got it, and that it's reset the the computer. So that disk is in memory, it's not actually written yet. So what I'm going to do is uh, say write NSI. NSI is, is a common uh, suffix for the North Star format disk images. And I'll say write NSI and disk, which is the variable that I put that into, and we'll just say NS word star 3.0.disk. And now that's on the disk. That's, that's on the hard drive here. Now, if I want to write to a blank disk, which I happen to have right here, um, I'll just put the blank disk in. And with this, you can just, uh, 
for example, I've got the, the demo and diagnostic disk here. So, in this case, I'll say write disk ADV demo diag 220.disk. And that'll start the disk writer over here as soon as I press enter, or it should. Oh. Disk write, not write disk. So, this is working. It's, it's going to fill up the buffer. Um, writing the disk is a little bit faster because it sends, uh, sends the image over in a compressed format. So, um, you're not waiting around for many kilobytes worth of zeros to come through. Uh, incidentally, this disk is a, uh, was a soft sector disk that was punched out to be hard sector by a, an acquaintance of mine who I also met on YouTube called Aaron. So shout out to him for figuring out how to do that because there's a lot more soft sector disks than hard sector. I should mention while I was uh, while I was waiting for um, to fix this keyboard. Actually, the keyboard on these are are Keytronic foam and foil type boards, and the uh, the foam in them goes bad after uh, twenty or thirty years. And uh, so I was waiting quite a long time working with a company called Texelec, who finally figured out how to how to make uh, production quality replacement pads. And uh, so I finally got that. This keyboard has all new foam and it feels exactly as good as the day it was built. It's pretty great. I would recommend them. It's less than 30 bucks for a set of pads. Um, but while I had all, while I was waiting for all of that, I also spent a bunch of time trying to figure out the disc format, um, the way that the stuff is actually written on disk is not exactly how it is, uh, or exactly how it's presented in the technical manual. Not the only thing they got wrong in the tech manual, but that's how it goes. Um, but I've gotten it figured out and I have the source code reasonably commented. It really needs to be uh, um, refactored at some point, but this is just a hobby thing, so I haven't gotten around to that. It's done. You can see how the end of the disk wrote a lot faster. That's because there were a lot of zeros at the end of the disk. So it was sending over compressed. It was only sending over 14 kilobytes instead of 51k for the, the final. So what we'll do now is uh, just reset this. You can, uh, there's a red switch on the back to reset it, or you can say command shift shift backspace. It brings us back to load system. And uh, assuming this disk is good, I've, I've not written to this once, so we'll see. It's not good. <clears throat> but, so it goes. And that's it. That's how to not write a disk. But uh, if you have a good disk and a good image, it will work just fine. Thanks for watching. So, uh, just a quick addendum. This is about 15 minutes after the last video. I figured out it was uh, <clears throat> it was my own software's fault that the disk didn't write correctly because it didn't return to track zero before it recorded it. So I did that, and uh, this is the same disk. I just wrote it once more with the same software, and there it is. The demo and diagnostic thing. So uh, 
it does work. My software needs more work, but it always does. So uh, that's that.